So the purpose of this video is to talk about the difference between introns and exons. Uh, as far as introns and exons go, the simple way of thinking about it is they're both sections of DNA. The difference between them in very general terms is that exons are coding regions of DNA and introns are non-coding regions. So that means that exons are the part of DNA that eventually gets coded for in a section of messenger RNA. Introns are non-coding regions, so they're basically skipped over. Uh, if we look at the way it's represented in this image, exons are shown in the light blue, introns are shown in yellow, and they're numbered. So in this particular section of DNA, we have seven sections that are introns, that are skipped over when it comes to the process of making a section of messenger RNA. So I know we talked about this a little bit earlier in the chapter when we were going through and talking about the process of transcription. We talked about transcription going from a section of DNA to a section of messenger RNA. And what you'll see is that process is actually a little bit more complicated than we originally talked about. Uh, what happens first in what's called a primary RNA transcript is the entire section of DNA is copied over. So move this down to get it a little bit more out of our way. So the entire section of DNA is copied. So you can see that the exon regions show up and so do the intron regions. So this is effectively uh, an exact copy of the section of DNA, which is how we were presenting the idea of RNA to begin with. The thing that happens next is the introns are cut out of the coding regions. So all of the intron sections end up getting removed when we come to the final section of our messenger RNA transcript. So you can see what we end up with in the final position here are just the green sections. And unfortunately, there's not continuity of color with this one, but the exons are the, the coding region. It's shown in blue in DNA. It's shown in green to represent the change going into RNA. And then only those green segments, only the exons, end up in what's considered to be the mature mRNA transcript. So the final version of the mRNA molecule that's produced at the end only has the exons in it. All of the introns end up getting removed. Uh, we'll talk in a little bit about why cells have these things, but the other thing to talk about briefly while we're discussing the structure of mRNA is to talk about what these things are on either side. Uh, this diagram does a reasonable job of presenting them. It shows one as what's considered to be a five prime cap. The other one is on the three prime end of the molecule, and this is called a poly A tail. Uh, there's another picture that I like a bit more than this one that I'll use to explain what those two things mean. So we take a look at this image. Uh, this is showing really the, the same thing as like the second half of that other picture. So it shows a primary RNA transcript. So the primary RNA transcript is the exact copy of the section of DNA where it has both exons and introns present. Once the RNA is processed, we end up getting the final section of messenger RNA that's been spliced down. This one has all the introns removed. So if you notice, these two intron sections are gone. In the final version, all we have are the exons. Uh, the thing that I like more about this image is it shows the five prime end and then the poly A end of messenger RNA. So the five prime end uh, is described here as a cap, which I like. It's, it's sort of like a stable end to the messenger RNA molecule that makes messenger RNA a bit more stable as it moves through the cell. The poly A tail sort of does the same thing. Uh, think of this as like, expendable information. So a poly A tail is just a bunch of adenines that are added on to the end of a section of messenger RNA. Uh, I've described mRNA all chapter as being sort of an expendable copy of DNA. So as messenger RNA moves through the cell, there's a good chance that it can be damaged. And that poly A tail is extra information. Like the, um, all these adenines don't actually code for amino acids that are important for the protein. Like the stop codon is going to come well before these. So because of that, this is all just extra information that kind of pads the end of messenger RNA and protects it as it's moving through the cell. So if nucleotides are broken off of it as it's being transported, it doesn't really matter because they're extra. Like it's excess information on the end of the, uh, the messenger RNA molecule. So the five prime cap 
protects the one end. The poly A tail kind of insulates and protects the other end of messenger RNA. The important information is in the middle. So we consider like the start codon being about here, the stop codon being about there, and then sort of like extra information on either end that's protecting this one as it moves its way through the cell. Uh, the brief thing to talk about here is just a breakdown of introns and, ex and exons and a trick to maybe help you remember them a little bit. So from the previous image, we talked about introns as being the non-coding regions of DNA. The simple way that I tend to remember this is to think of introns as staying in the DNA. So you associate that in with introns. They stay in the DNA that's not information that goes out with the mRNA into the rest of the cell. Um, exons, on the other hand, are the coding regions of DNA. These things exit the DNA as part of an mRNA molecule. So those go out into the cell. Those are used as a region that helps to code for a protein. So if you associate with introns staying in the DNA, exons exiting the DNA, or maybe even better would be staying in the nucleus and uh, exons exit the nucleus, uh, if you want to even think of it like that. Uh, it's a way of, of sort of associating these two things together to help you remember the definitions. Uh, the final thing for us to talk about is why do we even have these things? You know, why do introns even exist if it's a section of DNA that isn't coded for? And the answer is um, it's complicated, which unfortunately is, is the answer to a lot of complex biological phenomenon that we see. But uh, the way we'll look at it in here to, to make it a little bit more simplistic is that uh, introns allow for a process to take place called alternative splicing, uh, which basically means that uh, I'm saying to you that introns are not included in mRNA, and that's true most of the time. Uh, but there are some scenarios in which sections of introns are coded for. And what that means is the DNA can actually make multiple types of mRNA from a single gene right, in that, that original G, uh, DNA material. So what this does, ultimately, that's a benefit, is our second point here. It increases variation in an organism. So that's a good thing. A variation can be very beneficial from a survival and a sort of like Darwinian evolutionary perspective. And we'll talk about this more as we work our way through the school year. And uh, once we get to evolution at the end of the year, we'll talk about variation as a key to many species' success and, and surviving over long periods of time. So uh, that's really the, the reason behind these. I don't want you to think they're simply excess information. Um, in most instances, the introns are not coded for, but it does allow for this process of alternative splicing where the cell can make multiple variants of uh, proteins from a single gene from a section of DNA. Uh, so that is very much an exception. Usually the introns are not coded for, but it's just a good thing to be aware of. And I think it's always good for you to understand why we have certain things. Uh, if we're talking about, you know, this is kind of an exception, that's okay, but it's, uh, it's good to help you understand the full perspective. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Hopefully this was helpful for introns and exons.